Everybody, welcome to another video here. I am in the New York office today with John Gorman. John, your title here at HRP is? Um, project consultant or geologist. And today we are covering some core competencies and onboarding stuff for HRP, but are very important to know for everybody. And today it is how to fill out a chain of custody. John, what is a chain of custody? Uh, a chain of custody is a record, it's a paper document that you send out with your sample coolers most of the time, or it could be with a manila folder, or wherever you're sending your samples in. And it's just a, it's a record of when you first collected your sample, what samples did you collect, what date, what time did you collect them, everything that you want to analyze it for, and signing it and dating it. And uh, why is it important that we know how to fill these out? Why, why do they matter? Um, well, if you, anything should ever happen to samples, which honestly, it's happened plenty of times before where a sample might get lost, especially if you're shipping it for FedEx or something like that, you wanna make sure that HRP is not liable for losing any samples, you know exactly where it went wrong, where it got lost, and you also wanna make sure it's consistent with the lab report at the end. You don't wanna confuse any of your samples, so it's a very good way to organize it and lay it out. All right, excellent. So uh, why don't you show us now how to fill out a chain of custody? Sure. So to start with, always want to use a pen, never use a pencil. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to want to fill out section one, which is basic customer information. This is all information about you, the sampler, and the company that you're representing. You want to make sure you put your office information in there. In this case, it would be one fair child square. You're going to want to put down any contact information. Usually, you always want to put down your project manager's information in case the lab needs to reach out. Okay. Then you're going to want to put your manager's send invoice to. That could actually be HRP or it could be the DEC. It could be a client. It could be anybody. Mm -hmm. um, always you want to make sure that your project manager tells you who to send the invoice to. Mm -hmm. And then the report will also go to your project manager. Okay, once you get that section done, you can move on to project specific information. Always wanna put down the title of wherever you might be. Project manager, same info. Project location, could just be the city that you're in and state. Uh, quote or PO number, it's just a job number that you're billing all your time to. That's an easy section. Uh, the next part is you wanna make sure you get your turnaround time correct. Um, that's another thing, before you ever start sampling, you want to know how soon samples need to go out and how soon your client wants results. In most cases, we'll use the standard uh, shipping time, which is seven to 10 business days. In this case, it's eight. Uh, next, you want to pick what type of report that you want to receive from the lab. Sometimes it could be, um, it could be a very long category B report or it could be a category A report. Um, in this case, we'll just do a quick summary report in the state of New York. Electronic data delivery is another big important thing that you want to make sure that you're getting right. Um, for almost all of our HRP projects, we, we use Equus for everything, so you're going to want to click Equus and then New York State DC. And then now you got all of your basic info done. You also want to say what page number this is if you're just doing one particular chain for one cooler. You only need to do page 101. Um, and now you can get into the customer sample ID. This is the most important part of the chain mm -hmm. where you want to make sure you document all your samples, what type of samples they are, how did you collect them, and lastly, what sort of analysis do you want to run. Another important thing too, if you know that you're going to be resampling from a certain point, particularly wells, you always want to make sure that you put a date on your sample title, uh, sample ID I should say. Um, it could be 6822 is an example, and then your sample ID, which would be MW4, MW6, whatever it may be. Uh, for your next matrix, you're, it's always going to be uh, how did you collect it? Is it a soil sample? Is it a groundwater sample? Is it an air sample? Make sure you get the date. Your date should always match your sample label on the actual bottle that you collect your sample in. Time is always military time. Uh, composite or a grab sample, make sure you indicate that. And then lastly, what type of sample are you, what type of analysis are you running on your sample? We'll do 8260 VOCs to start with, very common one. We'll run it for SVOCs too. Then lastly, you want to indicate how many bottles that you're sending out per sample. Usually it's three for VOCs, two for SVOCs if you're dealing with groundwater. Um, and then lastly, the number of bottles that you're sending with a particular preservative is the next column over. That's more of a lab safety issue, so make sure you mark that down. Again, with the number of bottles that you're using. 
And then lastly, if you have any comments on the sample itself, let's say for some reason you didn't collect enough volume, you could tell them, oh, I'll use this sample instead, use this bottle instead for this uh, analysis. So in this case, we're not gonna really leave that blank. And then lastly, this is another important part, should your samples ever go missing, you wanna make sure that you sign your name down there, put a date on it, the time when you dropped it off, whether it be FedEx or the lab itself, and then you can leave it blank. Whoever's picking it up from you, they'll sign it, date it, send you a copy back if they're good about it. And then lastly, sign your name again at the bottom, say that you're the one that in fact sampled them. And then any other notes that you might have for the lab, that goes on the very bottom. And uh, that's it. That's how you fill out a chain of custody. And what does that finished product look like? Here's what it looks like. Here's a little example for you. Mine doesn't look anything like that. See, I- Ah, you blew it. Yeah, I I drew us just hanging out and making the video, right? There's the, there's the camera and the lights. Unbelievable. There's a T-Rex up here though. The T-Rex is cool. Okay. Well, I think we can send this into the lab. Yeah, lab will respect that. Yes, and the greatest best part is, this one's for you. Awesome. Can't wait Thanks to show my mom. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us, everybody. Uh, hopefully you learned more than I did in this video, and we will see you in the next one. All right, everybody. If you enjoyed this episode, if you learned anything, be sure to hit the thumbs up, uh, subscribe, and hit the bell down below for notifications, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.